Hello everyone, today we're going to talk about England in the 17th century. This unit is on absolutism, but as I mentioned in the introduction to this unit, England is the exception to the rule. Absolutism does not take hold, and Parliament, uh, the legislature, maintains a lot of power in England during that time. And in this video, we are going to talk about why that is. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe the event that led to the English Civil War, a very bloody a uh, very consequential conflict that occurred in the 1640s and 50s in England. You should also be able to explain the difference between England and most other European countries in terms of the power of the monarchy, which I've already hinted at in that I have said that most other major powers in Europe had absolute rulers and England didn't. You should also be able to trace the rise and fall of the Commonwealth in England. The Commonwealth was a period in England where there was no king and it was a republic instead of a monarchy, and we'll explain why. You should be able to define or identify these terms or people. Puritans, Petition of Right, Oliver Cromwell, the Restoration, and the English Bill of Rights. So, before we go into all of that, a little bit of background. When we talked about the Renaissance and the Reformation, we talked about King Henry VIII and the Church of England and his six wives and how some of them were beheaded and his children and all of that. Well, he died in 1536. And he had three children, um, and each of them, at one point or another, succeeded him on the throne of England. The first was the son, of course, because it uh, was a male-dominated hereditary line in England. Uh, Edward VI was his uh, youngest child, but again, was the son, with Jane Seymour, uh, his third wife. And he died in his teens. He did not reign very long. Uh, he uh, was succeeded by his oldest half-sister, uh, Mary I, who was Henry VIII's daughter with Catherine of Aragon, his first wife. Catherine of Aragon was from Spain. She was Catholic. Mary I was Catholic. And took pains to persecute and kill uh, a lot of Protestants. Uh, that's where she earned her nickname Bloody Mary, which I'm sure you're probably uh, at least having a passing familiarity with. Mary I died without any direct heirs, so she was succeeded by her younger half-sister Elizabeth I, who was Henry VIII's daughter with Anne Boleyn, his first beheaded wife. Elizabeth I was Anglican. That means she was in the Church of England, which is the um, church founded by Henry VIII, obviously. But she found a way to make Catholics and Protestants peacefully coexist during her reign. She died in 1603 after reigning over 40 years. She did not have an heir at all. So rule passed to the Stuart family, which was the royal family in Scotland. And the reason it went to them was a couple of generations before King James IV of Scotland married the daughter of King Henry VII of England, uh, Margaret Tudor. So they got themselves into the line of succession that way. So James I, uh, known in Scotland actually as James VI, uh, became the King of England. And this was the end of the House of Tudors. Sorry, y'all. And this is the beginning of the House of Stuart in England. So, throughout history, generally, English kings and queens have found a way to peacefully work with Parliament. But, James I, following a lot of his contemporaries throughout Europe, other kings and queens in places like Spain and Russia, uh, tried to invoke some... A measure of absolutism. He was on record as saying, for example, that he believed in the divine right of kings, that he uh, obtained his power from God, and he was answerable to no living being. He also had a lot of fights with uh, religious factions in England, such as the Puritans. Puritans were Protestants, but they were really, really, really Protestant, and they were totally against anything having to do with the Catholic Church. And they thought that the Church of England, despite being Protestant, was still a little too Catholic, had too many Catholic traditions, for example. And the Puritans were called Puritans because they wanted to purify the church of uh, what they saw as Catholic, um, you know, nuisances. Puritans you may be familiar with if you've ever studied U.S. history at all as the founders of Massachusetts Bay Colony uh, in the year 1630. One thing King James did to keep uh, Puritans happy, they wanted a translation of the Bible that everyone could read and he issued uh, the King James Version of the Bible in 1611, which is one of the more popular translations of the Bible to this day in the English-speaking world. James I 
passed off the rest of his reign. He died in 1625, succeeded by his son, King Charles I. Uh, Charles I kind of did the same thing that his father had done in asserting divine right and ignoring Parliament uh, at every chance he got. Parliament in 1628 drew up a document called the Petition of Right. Petition of Right is a big sweeping bill that uh, said the king could not raise any taxes or imprison people without consulting them or without having a dang good reason to. Charles I laughed and said, well, I'm not going to listen to that, and you can all go home. And Parliament sat empty for 11 years, from 1629 to 1640, didn't even bother to bring them together. In 1640, Parliament came back, and they were not playing around. They remained in power for 13 years, which is incredibly long um, a Parliament session in England. Uh, they were known as the Long Parliament, because they were around for such an extended period of time. They executed some of the king's most trusted advisors, archbishops and you know, lords and all that. Um, Charles I, not pleased with that, as you can imagine, and strikes back. He has uh, some members of Parliament arrested at one point uh, in, I want to say, 1642. He sent a bunch of people um, into Parliament and had the leaders arrested, essentially. Uh, he didn't arrest everyone, though, and the ones who escaped kind of roused up a rebellion against the monarchy among the common people. And that is how the English Civil War began. So, the English Civil War was fought between two sides. Uh, one is the King's forces, known as the Cavaliers, which uh, you may have um, seen in pop culture to this day, with the big hats with the feathers in them and the very gallant-looking clothes. Uh, an example of a Cavalier is seen there on the left. Um, they expected to, you know, rout... Uh, Parliament's forces pretty quickly. They saw themselves as being better fighters, better trained, uh, better funded, all of that. But Parliament's forces actually ended up being fairly formidable. They were known as the Roundheads, and or, or the uh, New Model Army was another name for the uh, Parliamentary Army. They were not called Roundheads because of their helmets, uh, as you might have guessed by looking at that picture there on the right. They were actually called Roundheads because they kept their hair very closely cropped, uh, closely cut around their noggins. So, they were called Roundheads. Oliver Cromwell was their leader, and after five years of very fierce fighting and a series of decisive victories, led the Puritans to a win in the English Civil War. They defeated the king. So, in 1649, Parliament, now in charge, uh, after King Charles I was essentially taken prisoner at the end of the Civil War, they tried him in a kangaroo court for treason, uh, and betraying the people of England, and had him executed. There had been kings in Europe um, before that had been assassinated or that died under suspicious causes, stuff like that. This is the first known time in Europe that a king was legally, and by legally I mean you know, put on trial, and killed, executed by his own people. So, at this point, there's no king. Oliver Cromwell, whom you see right there, uh, declared England a republic uh, called the Commonwealth, and it was ruled by Parliament, uh, at least for a time, but Cromwell was the most powerful person in that Parliament, and he eventually rose to the top, and in 1653 he was declared the Lord Protector of England and Ireland. Now, the supporters of the monarchy, they were defeated, but were not completely gone, and they continued to attack England via Ireland and Scotland throughout the 1650s, trying to regain power for the monarchy. Uh, they had a king, sort of. Uh, it was Charles I's brother, Charles II. But what they really had to wait for not was not beating Parliament in a battle. They just had to wait for Parliament to outstay their welcome. And they were dominated now by Puritans, uh, which we talked about being, you know, the people who wanted to purify the church. They were also incredibly religious, and they imposed a very strict religious code on the people of England. Uh, they thought theaters were immoral, so they closed down all the theaters. They were against drinking, so they closed down all the taverns. They outlawed things like dancing. Um, so if you ever hear something being referred to as Puritan, what it means is it's boring as crap. And uh, eventually people of England just got tired of it. And uh, when Cromwell died in 1658, uh, Parliament was, was already losing their power and without a strong leader to keep them together, uh, the people of England eventually just got completely tired of Parliament and uh, 
brought the monarchy back. Fun fact, uh, when Charles II came back on the throne as the uh, King of England in 1660, uh, they dug up Oliver Cromwell's body, beheaded it, and then hanged his uh, body on, uh, I believe, London Bridge. Which just goes to show you that uh, you know they don't forget, if you behead our leader, we will behead you back. So, the Restoration is what that time period is called. The root of Restoration obviously being Restore. The monarchy was restored in 1660 with King Charles II. Uh, he avoided conflict with Parliament, even though he reversed a lot of what they had done under the Commonwealth. He reopened taverns, reopened theaters, and all of that. And it's more of a strict religious laws. So he kind of took those away. When he died in 1685, James II, his brother, took power. James II was incredibly Catholic and was not shy about it, which angered a lot of people in England. And it ang angered Parliament especially because they were Anglican. They were Church of England, Protestant. So Parliament decided they've had enough of James II, and they invited um, James's daughter to rule as the leader of England with her husband, William of Orange, who was the king of the Netherlands. Uh, she had married him years before. And they basically sailed over from the Netherlands uh, in Western Europe in 1688 and uh, staged a bloodless coup. They overthrew James II. He fled to France where he lived out his days in exile. And that was called the Glorious Revolution because it was not uh, bloody. They, there was no conflict there, really. And uh, they ruled for a number of years as William and Mary. Um, a college was opened in their name in 1693 in the American colony of Virginia, which uh, is open to this day among the notable alums of William and Mary, uh, Thomas Jefferson, John Stewart of The Daily Show, and fellow Research Triangle High School history teacher Mamie Hall. You may have seen the pennant in the room if uh, you are lucky enough to be a Research Triangle doctor. So, in 1689, uh, to assert that power once and for all, Parliament passed a series of acts that became known as the English Bill of Rights. And the English Bill of Rights asserted Parliament's power over the crown in England. Um, the big thing was they had the power to tax. Uh, they, they had what was known as the power of the purse. They controlled the purse strings, how much money got brought in, how much money got spent. As a result, England became what was known as a limited monarchy or a constitutional monarchy, where they have a monarch there, they have a crown, but uh, their power is checked by the Parliament, which makes them different from a lot of other countries in Europe at this time, where the king ruled with pretty much no uh, checks in place. That'll do it for today. Uh, as always, be sure to ask your teacher if you have any questions. Cheers.